Hi, it's Kip K back with another weekend project for Make Magazine. I'm amazed at how far computer technology has come over the years. I, I remember my first computer, I think it was a 8088 processor, and it had, uh, I think, 640K of memory, maybe. Sure has come a long way, especially when it comes to memory, and now we're easily into gigabytes of RAM. So what do we do with these obsolete memory chips that we have? And I've collected quite a few over the years. Well, on today's weekend project, we're going to build a cool mood light made out of obsolete Sims. You can find the Bite Light project by Ross Orr in Make Volume 9. Since I didn't have enough memory chips that actually matched, I decided to order a bulk lot of them from my favorite auction site, and I got about 70 256K 30-pin SIMs. But you could pull this project off with a variety of memory chips in different shapes and sizes. To build the cover, you need to start off with a piece of Lexan or plexiglass. Mine was 12 inches square, and I also picked up some household goop and started painstakingly gluing each memory chip down onto the Lexan after marking a uh, spot, leaving about a three-quarter inch gap around the edge of the Lexan. Now carefully glue each memory chip down, and you want them to be glued chip side down. When I was done, I glued 63 256K SIMs down for a whopping 16 megabytes of RAM. Now it's time to head out to the shop and build the box that will house our bite light, don't forget safety goggles and also gloves because we're going to be cutting some wood. I used a half inch piece of handy panel wood which is a little bit smoother than plywood and a little bit easier to work with. And then after measuring the dimensions of my box I started cutting out the four pieces to form my four inch deep box. Now this box will be about three quarters of an inch smaller in dimensions than my piece of Lexan. Now I decided on using some one inch corner braces to actually build my box frame. It just seemed like it'd be a lot sturdier. Uh, you could have used uh, nails or screws in the edges, but I just went with some corner braces and put in my eight corner braces to form my finished box. For the reflective surface inside the box, I used some sheet metal, cut out a piece the size of the top of my box, which I cut out earlier and then I glued it down using my amazing goop and the inside of the box is almost finished. The last step is to mount the fluorescent light bulb. You can use a variety of wattages. I chose a 60 watt, but you could use a lower wattage light bulb for a more subdued effect. You'll see how it looks in the end. So I mounted my fluorescent light and then also drilled a hole centered at the top so that I could mount my bite light on the wall. After painting the box frame flat black, it was time to mount the back cover and I did that by drilling four pilot holes and then putting in four screws. And the box for our bite light is almost finished. The last step is to run the wiring. I used some lamp cord and ran it through a hole that I drilled in the bottom of the frame of the box. And don't forget to tie a knot in the lamp cord so it doesn't pull out. And then attach the two wires to the two wires on your fluorescent light fixture using some wire nuts. Okay, we have power to our fluorescent light. The final step, to attach the cover. After drilling four pilot holes, I screwed the bite light cover into the frame. I also put some small rubber bushings between the Lexan and the frame uh, to allow the heat to escape that would be generated by our lamp. So let's turn on our bite light and turn off our main lights. And there it is, the bite light, the high-tech mood light from a fluorescent lamp and some obsolete SIM chips. We'll see you next week with another weekend project. <music>